I'm really, really honored, Anne-Marie, to have here with me astronaut Peggy Whitson. She is joining us from the Kennedy Space Center. Um, uh, Peggy has, held, has numerous awards and accolades, but the one that is most impressive is she has spent 665 days in space, the longest ever for an astronaut at NASA. She's also the oldest astronaut to ever go into space, and we're just really honored to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. You could have left that one off. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> so incredible, though. <laughs> Anything is possible, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, you and I were talking during the commercial about uh, the Apollo 11 mission, and you were nine years old when yes. it happened, uh, when you saw uh, Neil Armstrong take that, you know, giant leap for mankind. Um, do you remember that moment? Absolutely. Um, I was with my family, you know, sitting on the floor in front of the TV and watching it very intently. And I, I don't know that it, you really know how significant an event like that was when you're nine, but for me, it, it definitely left an imprint. It definitely left me with the sense of, wow, cool job. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to do that someday. You want to do that someday. <laughs> and, and what was it? Describe how you felt when you were finally selected. You had a long career as a biochemist, but then you were selected to be an astronaut. What was that like? Oh, it was it was finally coming true, this dream, this goal that I'd been pursuing. I uh, tried to, I applied for being an astronaut for over 10 years, even though I was working at NASA before that. Uh, so it took a lot of perseverance to, to finally make it as an astronaut. Um, and so to finally get my opportunity on that launch pad was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Do you remember when you first heard that there was going to be a female astronaut? What that feeling felt like? Oh, absolutely. Actually, it, coincidentally, it was the year I graduated from high school. And I think that that dream of being an astronaut from nine years old became a goal for me. And I worked for that goal uh, the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, it, this is going to sound like a dumb question from somebody who's a land lover uh, here on planet Earth, but um, can, what is the feeling, what was the feeling like from the very first time you did your first spacewalk, and do you have that same moment of anticipation of adrenaline all those different times that you've done them? Uh, the, I think you get used to it a little bit. You do, bit. You do, yeah, you you do, do get used yeah. to walking in space. <laughs> yeah, you do get used to walking in space. <laughs> the, the first time, obviously, a lot more pressure, you know, worrying a lot more about um, you know, can I do my job and is it going to, you know, will I screw up? Right. All that worry was uh, definitely much more uh, uh, critical at that point. But stuff happens when you're doing spacewalks. Things go as un unplanned. You know, my eighth spacewalk, we had an unplanned loss of a cover that we had to, you know, then jury rig something around. So. Things don't always go according to plan in any in any case, even with experience. So yeah. uh, you do have to be able to think on your feet. Uh, That's pretty cool. Uh, while you're walking in while space, you're, well, <laughs> while yeah. you're floating, floating around, yeah. up there. <laughs> think on, on your floating <laughs> yeah. uh, while you're floating around. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, you know, I, I also had the honor of uh, interviewing Charlie Duke, um, and you know, I think sometimes for us here back on Earth, we what intrigues us about the lunar landings and about space missions in general is the imagery, right? We see you floating yes. up in space, but I think what is sometimes lost is the scientific accomplishments, the achievements, mm -hmm. the things the things that we learn while we're out there, while you're out there conducting yeah. those missions and how vital they are. And Charlie pointed to how many things are, are um, related to our economy. What about, what have we learned, what have you learned that can be applied so that everyday Americans can understand how their lives are getting better by the work that you do? Well, the different types of research going on all, all the time on board the space station. I've done everything from growing soybeans to superconductor, superconductor crystals in orbit, uh, wow. trying to optimize those. Uh, the types of research, I think, is what makes it so much fun to be an astronaut, getting to do so many different things. This last expedition, I had a lot of experiments using stem cells, trying to look at how stem cells grow in space. But uh, for instance, for practical applications, you know, we're coming up with a botulism uh, um, vaccine that uh, came, these derived from uh, uh, Salmonella we grew in space. Wow. Because they became more virulent, more uh, nasty in space and they were able to develop a vaccine to that and now we're it's in human trials and so we can have 
direct applications to something like that here on the ground. But there's all kinds of research in all different fields. Um, I like the life sciences part because that's my background. Right. Fantastic. It's so great to meet you. It's such an honor. I mean, I was telling Charlie that uh, as a kid, I had pictures of astronauts on my wall um, because we, as children in the 70s, we still sort of look to astronauts as heroes for doing things that no one had ever done before. So it's really an honor to meet wow. you. It's an honor to meet you, too. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Peggy.